I made $18,000 in a single weekend. But at what cost? <laughs> Man, I'll be living the high life for a while with this much cash. In this video, I'm going to add up every single expense and profit I had in a singular weekend running my own Artist Alley booth. I decided to make this video during Dragon Con. It's a four day event over Labor Day weekend in Atlanta, Georgia. Historically one of my most profitable shows, but also one of my most expensive. I'm not gonna add up the costs associated with the creation of my products or my booth setup, as these costs aren't necessarily associated with Dragon Con specifically. And depending on the type of work you make and the things that you sell, these costs can be wildly different. This event was held in the first weekend of September, but my first expense came way sooner than that. Applications went out in February, and then I got an acceptance letter in May with a link to payment. There was two options, a six foot table or a 10 by 10 space. The six foot table is more standard for most artist alleys and was $350. However, I opted in for the extra space, which was $600. Great, already $600 in debt. This is going so well. We should go in case being a moron is contagious. Before the show, I had a number of things I needed to get done, prepping a lot of products, packing, and because I had recently moved to LA, I was flying to the show. Because this is one of my busier events, I wanted to bring a lot of stock, but flying made this a bit difficult. I ended up shipping out three packages a couple days before the show, and because they were so heavy, it cost me $185. This wasn't something that was necessarily easy enough to put on a plane, so that's why I opted in for shipping it out. I took Southwest, which luckily allows two free check-in bags. However, I brought more than that. I brought three bags and I got charged $125 for the third bag. Normally I would prefer to drive, but because LA is 3000 miles away from Atlanta, I definitely had to fly. So it was $450 for my plane ticket. Approximately 10 hours later. So once our flight landed, all I had to do was pick up our luggage. Sadly, one of my luggages got destroyed in transit. Luckily, we sold enough through the weekend where I didn't have to replace it to get home with all my stuff, and I was able just to trash this and not worry about it at the end of the show. We decided to come a day prior to the setup day. This cost us a little extra in the Airbnb as we had to pay for an extra day, but I think it was a lot less stressful than having to show up, you know, an hour or two before the show opens and set everything up. I'm a vlogger now, so you gotta put up with this. Oh God. You're doing good. <laughs> You're doing a good job. Look at this content. Look at this. This is good content. The old me would've been helping you. The new me, standing there. Uh, you wanna go to Target with us? <laughs> Stop it. Yeah. Table achieved. It's so okay. How much was the table? I don't remember. 50? Hmm. You got it? And for lodging, I decided against a hotel for this show. It's really hard to book a room for Dragon Con specifically. They go super fast, there's like a lottery system, and it's just a big hassle. So I ended up splitting a large Airbnb with 13 other people, bringing our cost per person to $235 each. And because I brought along an assistant, I ended up covering their stay as well. So $235 times two is $470 in total for my Airbnb expense. So most shows will have a dedicated day just for setup where you can pick up your badge and then check into your artist alley space and kind of pre-set up your booth. So that's exactly what we did. I think we set the booth up over the span of about five hours. I did a new kind of canopy setup where it like turns with the booth. And then that's what we needed the extra table from Target for as well to make that corner. So that's why we needed so much time. Normally it wouldn't take me so long to set up, but because it was kind of a new setup, it definitely took a lot of playing around and trial and error. Ladies and gentlemen, we are closed. It is 8 o'clock. I want to go to bed. I also ended up picking up those packages that we had shipped out a few days prior. We sent them to the hotel that the convention was at. They ended up charging us a holding fee of $65 that they didn't really warn us about, nor did they charge us the year prior. So that was a little annoying, but it is what it is. I'm not mad. I hold no grudges. 
So my other expenses for the day was an overpriced convention soda, and then I got lunch for both me and my assistant. I think we grabbed sandwiches from the hotel market, and then parking. My assistant ended up driving up their car from Florida, so our Uber fees ended up turning into parking fees. And then we ordered pizza for the night because we're too lazy to cook. Day one is always interesting, especially for a returning show. Ideally, I always want to do better than the previous year, so I'm always comparing my numbers really closely on day one. The first hour of opening, I had brought in $1,500, which I thought was crazy good. I was feeling great, thinking that it was going to be an insane day. Sadly, it slowed way down after that. It took another six hours to kind of double my money. I ended the day at 2975 which is pretty good for a Friday. Um, Fridays are normally the slower day at a convention. However, it definitely um, felt kind of sad because the first hour I made more than half my money for the day. And then after that, the high was over. But overall, I ended a couple hundred dollars over the previous year. So I'll take the win either way. I look forward to doing business with you again someday. And then another overpriced soda. <laughs> So my expenses for the day was breakfast in the morning and then parking. I was really bad that day and didn't have lunch at all and just had a soda and a water, which might explain why I was so tired. We ended up going straight back to the Airbnb and just making food from the groceries we had gotten the day prior. So normally Saturday is the really big day at most conventions. However, DragonCon has this famous parade in the morning that all the attendees go to. So the first few hours of Artist Alley is super slow. But once the parade lets out, things really get crazy. We ended the day at $6,020, which I was really happy with. I typically expect my Saturdays to at least double my Fridays, and we were right on the dot with that. Most convention patterns are pretty similar with whatever your Friday is. You can expect to double or even triple on your Saturday. And we ended the day a couple hundred dollars ahead of my last year's numbers as well. So very close, but just marginally better. Which, again, it felt like the attendance was less than the year before. I don't know if that's true, but that's kind of what it felt like. But it seemed like people were spending more, even if there was less sales. My expenses for the day was an Uber to the show, which we would have taken the car, but we thought that the parking situation was going to be a little too rough with the parade in the morning. And then I got a bottle of water, lunch for both me and my assistant. Um, I then got snacks at the end of the day instead of getting dinner because the lines were too crazy as I was hanging out with some friends at the end of the show. And then an Uber back to the Airbnb at the end of the night. I then made real dinner from the groceries I had gotten the first day. Now, Sunday at a show is normally super hard to predict, as it's normally the last day of any given convention. However, Dragon Con's a little different, as it's on Labor Day weekend, and the show goes all the way till Monday. So Sunday ends up being a full day, unlike most shows. And because we didn't lose the first couple hours to a parade, the show was super busy and super crazy all day. It ended up being my best single day ever, bringing in a total of $7,080. We averaged at $1,000 per hour, which is nuts. $7,000 in a single day will beat out some other conventions totals that I've done just this year. So I was really happy with that. And again, it definitely felt like there was less people in the hall from the year prior. I don't know if that's because the economy this year doesn't seem to be doing as well, but the people who were there definitely were spending because we were making more per sale than we were the year prior. I think my average sale for the weekend at this point was like $50 per person, where like the year prior it was like 30. Beth be upgrade. Yeah. <laughs> now whenever you see footage that's like smooth and beautiful, just know that that's, uh, that's because of me. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> and then my expenses for the day was a water, lunch for both me and my assistant, parking in the garage for the vehicle, and then we ordered in for dinner after we got back to the Airbnb at the end of the night. So Monday sucked, it was real slow. I made a couple really large sales right in the morning, but after that, it died out. And luckily I did make those sales or I wouldn't have made much of anything the entire day. After the first few hours, it was just other artists doing their own shopping around the hall, and I was no different. I bought these three originals because I'm really bad with money and I wanted them. This is a reality of the business world. I'm not going to add those to my expenses or anything as they're not a mandatory convention cost or anything. I just wanted them. So the first one I got was by Audrey Ben Jamison, one of my favorite artists. I'm really happy to have this one in my collection. The other two pieces are by Justin Gerard. I really love his work. The attention to detail is incredible. I ended the day at $2,140. Very few sales, but big sales for the day, and then it was time to break down. My expenses for the day was parking in the morning, me realizing how much money I could have saved if I had brought in a water bottle, the realization that my assistant has to eat every single day, and then an Uber back to the Airbnb. Oh man, we hit the jackpot! I'd call this a success. Mm, it would have been embarrassing if we had to take all those goods back home. Six and a half hours later. Oh, but we're not done yet. So I pay my assistants in two different ways. One is a base rate, which is $200 a day, and that includes travel and setup days. So if we make nothing, they still get the base rate no matter what. So over the course of five days, they made $1,000. The second way is by bonuses. So everything that we make over the first $5,000, they get 20% of that. So because we made $18,000, they made $2,600 in bonuses alone, so totaling $3,600 for my assistant. So by far, this is my biggest expense. Obviously, if you wanted to do the show solo, um, that could save you a lot of money there. But for me, this is well worth it for a number of reasons. One, I'm not the best salesman. A lot of times people will come up and I'll just be like, buy it or don't. Not the best tactic when you're running your own artist alley booth. So having somebody more skilled in that aspect, super helpful. And if I have to leave the booth for something super important, I have the ability to do so. As you can see, the show was very expensive for me to attend. However, we also made a lot of money. I think it was well worth it in the end, but there was a bunch of things I could have done to cut costs if I needed to. For one, I could have run the show solo. That would have saved me almost $4,000 right there and not having to hire extra help. I don't have the energy for that and I find it well worth it to hire some extra people to help me out through the weekend but depending on your energy levels and your priorities. Also, I could have taken advantage of the full kitchen at our Airbnb and prep more food. I was not very food conscious through the weekend and I definitely ordered out a lot. So I probably could have saved a couple hundred dollars right there. I could have also booked a hotel closer to the event, one that was walking distance. This might've cost me more in the actual hotel fee, but I would have saved a ton in Uber and parking fees. Depending on your priorities for accommodations, the pricing can change wildly. I think it might be good to compare this show to another show that I did a couple months ago, as I made a very similar number in profits. So I did San Diego Comic Con this year. I also made $18,000 at that show. I'll put the exact number here up on the screen. However, my expenses were drastically different for that show. Although it wasn't a local show for me, I was able to drive to that venue, and I think my total expenses were somewhere around $1,500 for the entire show. So drastically different from this show. So my major expenses for that show, which I'll put up on the screen, was the hotel cost, the booth fee, some food, and gas. I wasn't expecting San Diego to go as well as it did, which is why I didn't hire any extra help, which is one of the major reasons I made sure I had an assistant for some of my upcoming shows. However, getting $17,000 in profit at the end of the weekend definitely made my bank account really happy. The world revolves around money, and money is moved by merchants. Merchants hold their fingers in the pulse of the world. My point is expenses can range drastically depending on the venue and other factors. If you're just starting out, I would suggest trying to keep your travel expenses to a minimum, trying to pick local shows. You want to limit your risk as much as possible. Ichimas! 
I wanted to thank you guys for watching this video. We just recently got monetized, which is going to make it a lot more possible for me to make more videos like this in the future. If there's anything else you would like to see as far as marketing for artists, let me know in the comments down below. And please like and subscribe, it helps me out a ton with the YouTube algorithm.